lecturer is your reader. Take your reader through your discussion, explaining to them how the information that you're giving them is helping to uh, enlighten your reader on the answer to the question that's been posed to you, okay? There are some wonderful books on academic writing uh, by Stella Cottrell, that's C-O-T-T-R-E-E-L-L. -E -E and she actually writes books about how to write academically. Now, I am in awe of you anyway, because let's face it, how many British students, Brian, would choose to do a degree program in a second or third language? We just wouldn't. And here you all are, crazy enough to want to do a British degree, which is absolutely fantastic. So use the resources that are available to you. There's also um, on the Cardiff Met site, with the academic skills uh, section, you can actually send a sample of your writing to the academic skills team, and they'll write back telling you how you might improve the way that you write. So make the most of that. If you're struggling getting to grips with the library, anybody here struggling getting to grips with the library? <laughs> You can actually uh, live chat, because uh, the UK and uh, Morocco are on the same time, uh, and ask the librarian, yeah? Ask the librarian, say, I'm really looking for this um, uh, specific article, something to help me on my assignment. This is my assignment. Can you recommend something, yeah? And then they'll get back to you straight away, right? So use those resources. You also have fantastic, fantastic lecturers here. And we come across a lot and discuss things with the lecturers, and I've watched a lot of their um, lessons as well. But they're also really committed to you, yeah? So can make sure that you engage with them as much as possible. You might sometimes be sitting here thinking, I don't understand what's going on, I don't understand what my lecturer just thinks. And it looks like everyone else understands, yeah? It's just you that don't understand. Believe me, that's not the case. A lot, a lot of people will be in the same position. And the more that you engage with your lecturers and ask them for help, the better you'll do. So my first degree was in English, and my master's is in English, and I still went for help, and English is my first language, yeah? So here you are, multilinguistic, or multilingual, or whatever you want to call it. So you need to ask for help as well, yeah? Even if it's, obviously, you have to be careful when you're sharing assignments between each other because you don't want to be uh, copying what somebody else has done. But, you know, if you know somebody who, outside of the university <coughs> that speaks good English, you can show your assignment to them and ask them to read through and say, D does this make sense to you? Do you understand? You know, sometimes when you're writing and you write a really long, complicated sentence, yeah, and you're thinking, I don't really understand what I've just written, but hopefully my lecturer is going to think I'm so clever. They're going to interpret this as sheer genius. Does that sound familiar? Yeah? They won't. <laughs> so better to write in short, concise sentences than big, long, five lines of gobbledygook, okay? So make sure that when you're doing your assignments, be they presentations or reports or whatever, that you're making things very clear to your reader, because you're not just writing it to splurge out two and a half thousand words, you're writing it to be marked. And the thing about writing, and the reason we go on about it quite a lot, is because those people who think well, write well, yeah? So if your writing is clear, that shows what's going on in your head. And if it's big and mushy, your assignment, and that's what's going on in your head as well. So clarity is king. Don't feel overwhelmed by information. Use the information for your purposes. You are in charge. I give you that power, yeah, for you to decide what goes in and what goes out. Has anyone got any questions for me? Was that too much information, probably? But 